Oh, buddy. I know I'll miss you too. Good morning, guys. How are you? Welcome back to my channel. It's me, Steven. It is 6.13 in the morning on January 8th. I'm off to work, as you can imagine. Uh, I'm feeling about 10,000 times better than I did a few days ago. Even yesterday, I really didn't feel 100%, uh, but I'm feeling much, much, much better. I don't know what was wrong with me, but it seems most of it has passed. I felt a little bad uh, because Danny, who is a subscriber, and uh, Jennifer, his wife, were in Vegas, and uh, they asked if I wanted to get together, and it would have been good, but I just didn't feel well. Um, so next time they're in town, hopefully, we'll all have the time off. Um, let's see. So today is going to be a fairly long day. We are a good one, but a long one. We're going to be flying to, uh, we're doing a Seattle turn, I think, and each of those legs is like two, two and a half hours, and then we're flying to Austin. Uh, and that's uh, not the longest leg ever, but on top of that Seattle turn, it's going to be a lot. I think Duncan's is open, so I'm going to try and swing in there and grab uh, a breakfast sandwich and a coffee. I think I saw some headlights in line, so that's good. Um, yeah, so I will see you. And there's no real line. There's only one person there. Yay! I will see you at the airport. There's a beautiful sunrise over the airport. Can't quite capture the gorgeousness of the colors, but you have an idea. Good morning. Random, of course, no surprise. It's very common these days, even more common. But guess who I'm working with on this trip? Shella! I'm very excited. Hi. Everyone loves Shella. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. Hey guys, all right, so uh, I'm flying B on this trip. I could have flown C. But um, my other coworker really didn't want to fly B, she, her allergies and everything. So I'm like, I'll fly B. I don't mind it because uh, it gives me a chance to actually interact more often with passengers. So that's fun. Um, yeah, so I'm flying position B. It's usually a position the newest person has. But in this case, it's me. Uh, one of my other favorite people, Link Inc., is uh, working up in A. So. I'm back here in the back. See you in, where are we going first? Seattle? Seattle. Seattle. Hey guys, so that last leg from, did I even say hi to you when we're in Austin? I don't think so. Uh, so the one leg to Austin, super easy, super fun, great passengers. My coworkers are pretty cool. I'm working with a crazy person in the back. Crazy good person in the back. She's she loves awesome. it. She's awesome. Uh, but we're, <laughs> she's just, I can't say that. Um, we are having a very nice time. Um, I can't really share what I want to share with you because it wouldn't be, f yeah, it wouldn't be professional for me to say what I really want to say to you. Uh, not c sh because she's here, but because, yeah, she knows what I'm talking about. We've had a day, we've had a day, but, um, our passengers are great and, uh, the flights have been easy. We've got one more leg today. We're going to Austin. And so, uh, there we go. We've got 20, almost 21 hours, I think in Austin. I'm slam clicking. I'm not going out because I've walked around that darn lake a couple times and it doesn't get better. So I'm going to hang out my room, play. Uh, oh, I can start pulling up the winner for the giveaway. That's what I can do. But uh, yeah, I will see you in Austin. See you soon. We survived that day. I was walking down an aisle to get off the plane and it felt like it felt like Groundhog Day that I was never gonna get off that plane. It was like the longest day. But we're here in Austin, I'm super excited. Hey guys, hi. Yay. Oh, they gave me extra ketchup. Yay. Good. So I'm in Austin, which means I had to get the cheeseburger downstairs at the bar. Um, we get 40% off. Very excited. So I got my regular cheeseburger and onion rings. So delicious. Uh, but I'll... Oh, oh. I said no tomato, no onion. Uh, but the room, as you can... Very nice. Pretty simple. The view is, let's see what we got for a view. Well, it's dark, but it's also very nice. It's the very similar view as I usually have here in 
Austin, so I might leave the room tomorrow. We don't have a van time get set at uh, 5 p.m., so plenty of time to sleep, relax, go for a walk maybe tomorrow, and go to work. T tomorrow is a super day. We fly from here to Fort Lauderdale and then Fort Lauderdale to Tampa, so super, super easy day. I will see you later, alligators. I don't know where that came from. Good morning, guys. It's almost afternoon. It's like 11.58. I have been walking for about 35 minutes, just getting some steps, enjoying the day. It's about 60 degrees here in Austin. And there's a uh, thrift shop of some kind of vintage shop nearby. And I figured, you know, let's just walk over there, enjoy the day. And uh, it, Austin is very strange. It's getting very expensive and it's, it's uh, in transition from, I guess, weird and cool into gentrified and uh, I've walked quite a ways if you see that hotel way over here my hotel is like over here somewhere quite quite a while away it's just it's been a strange walk funky very expensive architecture next to collapsing tin roofs it's been very strange uh, but as usual I always find something just a little weird and it just kind of like I don't know piques my interest and I find it sort of strange do people steal air conditioning units is that a thing? I don't know. Because these suckers are chained up tight. Like, do people steal air conditioning units? Is that a thing? I don't know. But Google Maps says I'm very close to the thrift shop. It opens at 1. It's about noon. So I figured I'll just keep on walking. There's a cemetery up there. I know I love to walk around cemeteries. Am I the only one? But uh, yeah, I will see you at the thrift store or vintage shop, whatever it is. Have you ever walked into a pawn shop? <laughs> I've never been in a pawn shop. I always felt sort of mildly uncomfortable with the idea of walking in and buying someone else's important things, valuable things that they left behind for money. I was like, ooh, that makes me uncomfortable. Well, not anymore after thrifting so much. So there is a um, pawn shop here on the way to where I'm going. And I'm like, um, let me just walk in there and see what they have. It is absolute crap. Um, <laughs> it's like Google, but really expensive with jewelry and watches. There was one piece of John Hardy uh, jewelry that I like a lot. It was a woman's cuff bracelet, but they wanted $200 for it and it was broken. So yeah, um, I should probably walk into a, a pawn shop in Vegas. I bet you I found much more interesting things there. All right, let me continue on and maybe find a bite to eat before I get to my destination that does not open for another 50 minutes. All right, see you there. Well, I made it to the uh, thrift store and it's not quite what I was expecting according to the photos on uh, Google Maps, but uh, I'll take a peek around. You never, well... <laughs> You know, I'd say you never know. Well, this is interesting. Scandinavian folk patterns, creative coloring for grown-ups. Oh, I like that. Oh, did I see someone try to... Oh, someone already started coloring it. Huh. It's still cute. Hmm. All right, little birds. You're very loud. You're very loud. So when you strike out at Goodwill, it's one thing. You actually had a little mini sense of adventure, at least, going in hunting. That's the adventure. Like, wow, did I find something? No. Is that cool? No. It's all right. You know, no worries. I had a good time poking around. That place I was just in, I have to try and remember what it was called, was a dump. A dump, a dump, a dump. There was nothing there. There was one partially filled in color coloring book that I was interested in, but nothing else. I couldn't even take my camera out to show you anything. There was nothing to film. Crap. Empty shelves and crap. I was very, very disappointed, especially since I walked here 35 minutes and I'm walking back. It was, it was just a major disappointment, compounded by the rudeness of the young lady who worked there. Um, I went to the website to find them. There's no mention of having to wear a mask. There's no sign on the door when you walk in. It's just um, apparently I had headphones in, so I couldn't hear her. Uh, I was listening to David Sedaris be very funny. Um, 
But apparently she's cackling at everybody, about as irritating as these birds, to wear a mask, wear a mask. You have to wear a mask. A mask is required because I had turned my uh, podcast off. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't see a sign or I didn't hear you or whatever. And she was just so incredibly rude. For someone like in a thrift shop in Austin, it just was uncalled for. <laughs> Can you tell how irritated I was by it? But, uh, so I'm walking back. The silver lining, if I had to look for one, is that I'm finding really interesting bits and pieces of this neighborhood. Um, I love this place. I, I want to know the story. But look at me, see if I can show you this. It's this cool little house with a tin roof. And there are these like vintage campers set off. And there's two of these big steel storage containers in this very large yard. It's just, it's begging for a story. I love the house. I just can't imagine that tin roof with the rain falling on it. But blah, blah, blah. Nothing else interesting here. I'm going to head back to the hotel. Maybe see if I can take a nap. I've got three hours before my showtime. And that's it. So I will see you in the hotel room next. Hey guys. All right, so we are at the airport here, as you can probably guess. There we go. Um, going to Fort Lauderdale. We're flying a 321, which is unusual. I usually fly 320s. Um, but uh, we're flying to Fort Lauderdale, which is not that long. And then we're flying up to Tampa. So that should be nice and easy. Uh, speaking of easy, not that low numbers of passengers are any easier because sometimes it's more difficult. But we have 92 passengers on our on our plane today. Our aircraft holds 228 passengers, so we're going to have a fair number of open seats on this flight. What else? What else? What else? Yeah, I think that's it. And uh, as position B on this plane, I sit on L2. Yes, uh, door L2 later on down the road because i don't talk about like our configurations of like aircraft but later on when i'm flight attendant b on a 320 that we're flying on next time i'll be sitting on l2 which is in a different place than the l2 is in a 321. i'm confusing you let me stop talking i will see you soon hey guys do i look tan <laughs> i may have gotten some color today um so that flight was very nice we had 104 passengers today um we were supposed to have 92 104 no big difference um fantastic passengers um there were a couple of people up in front that i guess weren't the easiest but not my section uh the people in my section were flawless in fact uh the two people who were sitting directly in front of me facing me my jump seat in l2 faces passengers not some people's favorite but i like it because you know i'm chatty uh they just got engaged yesterday and I, I learned everything about them hi um super super cute couple really just 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 gorgeous couple lots of beautiful photographs they showed me everything i got to learn everything about them um and uh yeah it was a really nice flight our flight from uh fort lauderdale to tampa tonight is going to be 40 minutes or 38 minutes something like that um, completely full, 182 passengers, seven wheelchairs. So, um, and I only make mention of seven wheelchairs because Tampa is not always equipped with uh, enough people to help with that many wheelchairs. Uh, so uh, we've asked the captain to call ahead and make sure that they understand that we're gonna need seven people. Otherwise, these poor passengers sit on the plane for 40 minutes, 50 minutes, you know, it's not, it's not good. So, um, yeah, let's go to Tampa. Hey guys, just arrived in Tampa. And just a, a rule of thumb, if you're a flight attendant, of course, uh, the furthest away your room is from the front desk, if it's the most inconvenient room in the hotel, that is means the odds are all the higher that your room key won't work. I am in the end and the end of the end of this hotel. And of course, the room key wouldn't work, but that's the, <sighs> that's okay, I'm here. Um, that flight, oh, I'll tell you when I get my room. Hold on one sec. Hey guys, all right, so I finally made it to my room here in Tampa. This is not our normal hotel. This is much nicer than we usually get here in Tampa. Much nicer, wait till I show you the fridge. Oh, very excited. Um, let's do a quick room tour and then I'll tell you about this flight. Wow. Okay. 
So we'll start with the bathroom, of course. Uh, this is a wheelchair accessible room, so it's got a little bit more space in the bathroom so the wheelchair can sit in, you know, you can get over. Nice big um, vanity tub with all the appropriate uh, grab holds. It's still a tub I would not ever use. Um, the um, shampoo and stuff is very nice. It's by Coors. Very nice stuff. Um, the room itself is very sophisticated for Tampa. <laughs> Not too bad. I love this. Seating for putting your shoes on and stuff and storing your luggage and stuff. Um, I love the uh, dark wallpaper and then this lighter wallpaper. Very nice. The view through these shears is of a parking lot. That's okay. Um, yeah, very very happy with the room, very spacious, very happy. And uh, let me unpack my food and my bags, and then I'll give you a little debrief on this last leg of the day. See you soon. Hey guys, how are ya? I almost say good morning, but it is 1.17 in the afternoon. I did not get to bed last night until probably four o'clock. I continued watching HGTV. It was like a marathon of like TV shows I enjoyed. House Hunters International, House Hunters, you know, domestic. Uh, there was um, Chip and, and Joanna Gaines. They had a TV show on. So just kept watching HGTV. And I was like, oh, God, what hour is it? Um, finally got to bed about 4.30, quarter of five. Did not sleep well because dinner if you want to call it that, I should not have eaten that much that late. I had pasta salad, don't judge, pasta salad, pretzel rods, and I had a little piece of cheesecake left over from last week, so I was like, well, let me eat that. <laughs> yeah, and then I went to bed, and surprise, 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 I had like massive heartburn, so I don't know what time I really actually fell asleep. It was before sunrise. But uh, I got a good rest um, after that pass, so that's good. Um, I'm going to head out of the hotel for a little while. There's a mall nearby. I'm going to walk around. I don't plan on buying anything because anything I buy these days is usually from a thrift shop. Uh, so I clearly don't need anything. But I'll just walk around. It's a nice mall. Um, fun, fun fact. I got an email today from the company uh, that was about our seniority list. Every January and July, I think, they send out a master seniority list. And they give us time to to um, uh, say, hey, no, you made a mistake. I'm higher or lower. But the master seniority list went out. And I am, out of 5,410 flight attendants in my company, we're not a big airline, but that's a fair number of people. 5,410, I am number 1788. So that puts me in the top 33rd percentile, which is not too shabby for five and three quarters years, right? I'm in the top 33rd percent, which is one of the reasons, one of the many, that I would never really leave my airline by choice. <laughs> so I'm sticking around to see what happens. Uh, even with this JetBlue thing, but blah, blah, blah. Let me just head out of the hotel, get some air, and see some pretty things. All right, see you soon. Well, it's taken me about 15 minutes to get here, but I'm going to enter through Neiman's, browse around for a bit. I really don't have to be in bed until probably 8.30, 9 o'clock tonight, so I've got some time. All right, I'll stop and look. Are those me? What about those? Yes is the answer to both of those questions. A pair of Alexander McQueen spiked penny loafers were originally $1,700. They were marked down to $880. It was so tempting. It was. I forgot how much I enjoyed this mall. It's got some good shopping. If you're into name brands and big, big labels, there's Gucci, there's Louis Vuitton, there's Saint Laurent, there's Tiffany, uh, David Yerman's around the corner. So there's some good mid-range, we wouldn't quite call it true luxury, but there's some really, really nice brands here. Uh, the mall itself is very nice for just browsing around walking. The food court, which I'm going to next, is right around the corner. I might stop in David Yerman just for a moment because I still love David Yerman jewelry, um, but uh, I, I have a long tumultuous past with David Yerman between selling it at Neiman's and Saks and actually working for David Germany. 
I opened the David Yerman store in Boston back in 2007, 2008. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I'm going to walk around the mall, get some steps in, finish my coffee, eat a little bit, and uh, I will see you soon. Is anyone old enough to remember the movie Logan's Run? Tell me these don't look like outfits from Logan's Run. Well, that was really fun. I walked around the mall, poked around at some nice things, met with my coworker Inc. We had uh, lunch. And now, I think he's over at uh, Fragrances getting a little snip or something nice. And I'm gonna head back to the hotel and go through all of my comments for December so I can finally pick the winner for my uh, giveaway uh, once I find where out. Oh, I think I'm heading that way. Um, so I, I will see you back at the hotel. Good morning. I do not know how I'm gonna survive today, really. I have a bottle of caffeine tablets in my lunch bag, but I slept for maybe an hour and a half last night. No reason, I just got in bed, couldn't sleep. Lay in bed, couldn't sleep. Watched a video, couldn't sleep. Played a game, couldn't sleep. Write a book, couldn't sleep. Meditated to an app, could not sleep. And of course we had an early show. So um, my watch just told me I had 14 minutes to get downstairs for the shuttle. So I'm gonna pay attention to my watch and uh, I will see you at the airport. Meanwhile, here, look at my bed. I mean, I really tried to sleep. <laughs> Look at that bed. I destroyed that sucker. All right, let's get out of here. Well, there was a silver lining. Actually, there were probably three or four silver linings this morning. First, when I got downstairs to the lobby, there was a fresh pot of hot coffee. Got myself a big cup of Starbucks. Got to the airport. Uh, we had plenty of time. I was not randomed. Mm-hmm. Uh, got an energy drink and a little bit of a sandwich at the uh, store here. Then got on the plane and then I remembered I'm working with Lori in the back of the aircraft. What could be better? Uh, and then Roy is the chaser. I will not probably work very much with him today, but he's also a very cool person. A lot of fun, great sense of humor. And I'm working with Inc., one of my favorite people on the company. I say that a lot, don't I? my favorite person in the company but i work with a lot of amazing people so it's hard to like have a favorite favorite you know I, I have a lot of favorites but um yeah there's my silver lining don't i seem animated right now <laughs> wait for my red bull or my um monster kick and i'll be like flying all right uh we have 90 open seats 90 open seats to detroit i don't know what the flight load looks like from there to vegas but i'm going home baby Hey guys, hi. I was trying to see if you could see my breath, but I just looked like I was doing this. Oh. Um, I am in Detroit. I'm tired, but I'm doing okay. A little caffeine helped. Um, so apparently, you might have already seen this by the time you've watched this video, but apparently there was a nationwide shutdown. No air travel for like three hours. Um, we were like the last airplane to leave Tampa before the shutdown, apparently. At one point, our pilot said we were one of 70 aircraft in the air in the United States. One of 70 aircraft. Uh, so, a little wacko. Uh, we just uh, landed a few minutes ago and it seems that the um, problem has been resolved. So we are indeed going to be able to get back to Las Vegas. We were all afraid we'd be stuck here in Detroit with no winter coat, of course, and it's like minus one or something ridiculous. Um, so something else very interesting happened on the plane. Um, you, you may have noticed that there's really almost zero, well, not almost, there is zero romantic interest in my life. You know, other flood attendants, they'll have boyfriends or husbands or they're engaged or they're dating somebody or me, I've got cats, right? Yes. Um, I have not been flirted with that I am aware of for many years. It's been almost six years since I've had a date on it. Well, five years. Um, I'm just not anyone's cup of tea, apparently. Nobody ever really uh, makes an effort to flirt. And I certainly am too awkward and self-aware self and self-well terrified to put myself out there. But today, I'll only show you this. I got a phone number. I'm not going to call him. Um, the, poor, the, the guy was oh, so handsome. So handsome. Um, 
he, uh, this guy, so handsome, so nice, a little bit of an accent. Um, he opened up a menu mid-flight and he asked me, is it too late to order anything? And what he was doing was he had his, his phone number, his little note, um, held on the menu and he was tapping it, asking if it was too late to order any, anything. And I was like really slow on the uptake, like what? Yeah, sure. We can order something. I had no idea what he was talking about. Um, it's been so long, but, uh, he made it obvious that he was trying to give me his number and I was like, Oh, thank you. But no, thank you. You're very sweet and you're very handsome, but no, I thank you. And I went back to my drum seat. I know, I know, I'm crazy. He was so handsome. Um, very princely features. Very, very, very handsome. Um, but I got back to my jump seat and my coworker, Lori. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can see my breath now. Look. Um, my <laughs> Stay on focus, Stephen. Um, my coworker, Lori, was like, what do you mean you didn't take his number? You just crushed him. You know, at least take the number. Give him some hope. And I was like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, so later on, I walked back and I said, uh, so, hi, you know, so where are you from? Because he has a little bit of an accent. He's from Puerto Rico. <laughs> so handsome. Uh, he, living in Delaware, moving to Detroit. And he is um, a trucker. He drives a truck for the postal service. And I'm like, huh, I live in Las Vegas. Sorry, it's a little far away. He said, I'll drive. Isn't that sweet for me? But yeah, I'm not going to call. I'm not going to call. There's zero chance. And my cat buddy would be so jealous. I'm going to get back on the plane where it's warm. <laughs> I'll see you soon. Hey guys, how are you? Welcome back to Las Vegas. Welcome back to my car, Shimi. I am barely able to form a complete sentence. I am so tired. No word. I think I, I may have gotten an hour and a half sleep. I think it was probably closer to, no, to an hour last night. So I am toast. Um, I'm actually thinking of taking a nap, just a cat nap here in the car, like 15 minutes just to get home safely. Cause I feel like, oh, uh, so I might just take a little, little cat nap here. Um, anything I should tell you about this last flight? It was a lot of work. It was a lot of work. Um, a little taste of nothing dramatic. But if you're a flight attendant, you know, the like the person who's potentially intoxicated, but you're not sure, the mom that is buckling the seatbelt over the baby and, and her, the mom together, but uh, doesn't, um, yeah, is not receiving uh, some suggestion to, you know, uh, just little, little things, just the entire four hours and 20 minutes. It was, it was a lot of work. I was hardly able to sit down. Um, on the A320, the L2 door, um, the jump seat is facing literally like this far away, uh, the lavatory door. So if someone has to get up and go to the bathroom, I have to get up and it's, it's just a lot. And, uh, today was, was a lot. It took everything I had to be the person I am usually when I'm flying. So, you know, smiling, full of stories and a couple laughs here and there. And I was able to hold it all together until the last like five minutes on the plane. We were deplaning, so I was fine. I was all the way in the back, but I just literally crashed in the back. My coworker, Lori, who was one of the reasons I survived the day, um, was like still making jokes and I was able to keep up with her most of the trip. But uh, this last 10 minutes, I was like, I just couldn't even form a thought. So she was <laughs> getting a little frustrated with me, but. Um, yeah, today was, today was, um, uh, a lot of work, but I am home and in probably a half hour, 45 minutes, I'll be home with my cats. Uh, I was able to, I was supposed to have a trip the day after tomorrow, but I was able to swap it for a day later. So I'll have two full days off in a row because I need a day to recover from this trip. Um, uh, I'm not working a lot in January. So far, right now, I have 71 and a half hours, almost 72 hours uh, credit. The line I received gave me 73 hours credit, but I swapped a couple trips, giving me under 72, but um, I may try to pick up a two or three day trip later on this month, just to kind of give myself a, 
a little bit of money because otherwise I'll be really suffering next month financially. But blah, blah, blah. Did any of that make any sense? I don't even know what I said. All right, I'm gonna let you go. Thank you so much for joining me on this trip and uh, yeah, I'll see you soon. Bye, fly safe.